For years, people have been making their own fan levels by creating all kinds of ROM hacks, but at some point, Nintendo saw the opportunity to turn the passion for level creation into a game. Super Mario Maker, the game where you create completely new levels in a level editor or play fan-made ones with all kinds of twists and challenges. The game was quite a hit, selling a total of more than 5 million copies. It was critically acclaimed upon its release, with reviewers praising the game's user interface and course editing tools. In May 2016, Nintendo announced that over 7.2 million courses have been created worldwide, which have been played for over 600 million times. But what this game also had was unused content that was never seen in the final game, most likely left out right before release or after alpha or beta testing. Let's start with some graphics, sprites and models that didn't make it into the final cut. In-game, collecting a big mushroom switches most enemies to alternate sprites in addition to some other effects. However, the final big mushroom version of the Koopa Clown car uses a simpler sprite, leaving this Mario Clown car unused. Clearly, they initially went with a Mario look-alike design, but ended up going with a design that didn't resemble Mario as much. It could also be that this version was for the original Super Mario Bros. style, since the colors are fitting for this. So if they wanted to add the Koopa Clown car to that style, they would have had to make a new one since it wasn't seen in the first Super Mario Bros. game. We aren't sure why they ended up not going for the Mario look-alike, it would have been fitting, and by the looks of it, this happened more often. These sprites of Bowser and Bowser Jr. carrying Peach and Luigi also went unused. The used sprites give each enemy a hat, a mustache, a slightly different palette, and for Bowser Jr., an alternate hairstyle. And as you can clearly see, these sprites were also Mario-themed in terms of looks, but yet again, they scrapped it. This also happened with one of the Goombas. This sprite seems to be an early Mario-fied underground version. But the final version has a different mustache, wears a Mario hat, and doesn't even recolor Goombas when underground. So instead of looking less like Mario in the final game, they ended up looking more like him. But why did they change the others then? Well, we're not sure. And it's a bit strange. Maybe too much Mario? Who knows? There isn't anything wrong with it as far as we can see. Now there's also some stuff on the enemies. Found in the same location as the alternate clown car sprites are these sprites for big steelies from Super Mario World and a teardrop for the clown car, neither of which appear anywhere in the final game. Now in Super Mario World, Bowser was able to drop these balls from his car, so maybe they wanted this to return in Mario Maker? Now for our last interesting enemy bit. A death animation for the Hammer Bros apparently exists, but are strangely enough, never used. Not sure what the plan was for this, but it does look hilarious. Now besides all of this, there are also some beta things from Splatoon, surprisingly enough. Present in the layout folder are a bunch of images from what appears to be an early version of the game, which is weird, since the two have nothing to do with each other. And what's even more weird is the fact that Splatoon came out before Mario Maker. So why add these images to the game's files? Some stuff is never seen in Splatoon, like this revolver. What it comes down to is that it even confused us. There's no reason to add these images. They even use a different engine, and one is 2D and the other is 3D. So yeah, it's all a bit weird. There's some interesting stuff in it though. It has an extreme diverse range of stuff. All kinds of clothing sets, weapons and other stuff. Most of it also found in the files of Splatoon. Now there's also something about the size changing mechanic seen in the game since they were planning to make them even bigger. There are two unused object sizes, 150% and 300%. These do not give the object special behavior like the used 200% size does. Now there are some simple reasons why they would remove something like this. The game couldn't handle it, or it would create a huge mess and bug the game. Both would make a lot of sense and would be a valid reason to dump them. At least the bigger one. The smaller one could have been scrapped because a middle size just wasn't useful enough. Now for our last subject, a handful of empty files can be found on the game's data. Most of them refer to objects already in the game, but one set seems to reference a cut enemy. These files likely refer to the Angry Sun, an enemy that has only appeared in Super Mario Bros. 3 and the only Sun-related enemy in the series. 
The files are present for all game styles, except for the original Super Mario Bros. Each game style has two files, indicating the Angry Sun would have had an alternate form like most of the other enemies. So by the looks of it, they wanted to add this nightmare of an enemy to the game, but ended up not going through with it. Maybe because it wasn't in a lot of main series games. Well, to be more precise, only in one, Super Mario Bros. 3. So it would be a lot of work to remake all these sprites and animations, and this could be a reason for cutting it. Also, the enemy isn't really loved by many due to its high difficulty to defeat it, so sadly enough it didn't make it in the game. In the end, Mario Maker was a great game. It did things fans wanted for years and actually used the Wii U gamepad in a great way, and not a lot of games can say that. They did a lot of tweaking and changing, but in the end it was totally worth it. Thank you for watching this week's video on some of the scrap content that was meant to be in Super Mario Maker. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe, and if you need some more content first to decide, make sure to check out our other videos.